Yeah, there you were thinking they're going to do like four episodes and not do a Mozilla. Gotcha. Yep. Boom. Snuck it in right at the end. We're doing a Mozilla watch right here, right now on the season finale mm-hmm. of Linux user space. But this is big news, Leo. Big news. I don't. Will it convince anybody, though? I've heard the Mozilla Firefox naysayers for so long, for years and years and years talking about how Mozilla and Firefox are going down. There are some pundits. Yep. Not going to refute that. So, but I think these things here in this news might actually bring some people around. At least I hope so. I hope so, too. Because I haven't left Firefox, um, but I'm these are also either. very yeah. welcome features for me as well. Because for some reason, um, every every month or so, I do this history thing, and uh, I end up with seven gajillion tabs. And so that's nice uh, that we get maybe maybe a little tab management. <laughs> yeah, that's actually one of the biggest uh, lead uh, topics here, I would say, is tab grouping and vertical tabs. <gasps> and the, the the sidebar to keep all of the tab stuff organized. I, I'm s- super excited. It it might e- even drag me away from Vivaldi a little bit. Oh, but I don't know. I mean, I I mean, they got they got yeah. There's I mean, it depends on how they implement this and, yeah. and how much I like it. Right. So well, for uh, for more than one season, I know that you've said that you've been using Vivaldi as your oh, yeah. default. So uh, that's, uh, that's that's those are big words. They, they are big words, and I use it for the show a lot because of all the tabs, like you say, that you get going, and having them stacked and you know grouped, all of those things, you know, tile tabs that maybe that could come that's they didn't talk about that but maybe that hold on would what's be... a, hold on wait I, I know mozilla doesn't or firefox doesn't have it what's a tile tab what is that what so you could tile two tabs in or three tabs you could tile multiple tabs in in vivaldi oh stack them okay. side by side right in the one browser window not have a separate browser and i don't need a right. separate window at that point so you know hopefully using less resources in order to make that you know happen Okay, right. Yeah. So using less than eighty four gigs of RAM uh to run a web a modern web browser with modern web page. Right. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe we can cut that down by about five twelve megs. <laughs> That's not what you know they're talking about here with at least not yet. But they're talking about grouping okay. in, in, in vertical tabs and that's a big thing to keeping tabs organized. So it, these are welcome changes in my book. So let, let's look at tab grouping. I kind of already do that with uh, multi-account containers. Yeah, but... that's one way. Okay, so I think uh, this tab grouping, though, is a lot more like the Vivaldi way mm-hmm. of tab grouping, where... Uh, how, how, does, how does Vivaldi actually do the tab grouping thing? I mean, so Vivaldi has uh, the stack of, of tabs. And, oh, right. and So they're grouped, they're grouped in a stack. I mean, I don't know what exactly you know the mozilla's planning yet but um the the stacked uh is is basically a group i I can have all of my tabs up there at the top and then if i click on one of them it can you know come down to the next level and have a whole bunch more tabs so right um that's kind of nice i like that a lot especially when i've got one topic i can put them all in the stack you know and and so I could say, you know, Gen 2 history could be a whole group. Or... Right. Yeah, because that's, that's slightly different than what I do with uh, with the multi-account containers, yeah. right? Because that, that's more about keeping a profile together. Right. And making sure that you're logged into the right things, um, and then you separate out. So if you're logged into one Gmail on one, account, uh, one multi-account, then you can be logged into a different Gmail account on a right. different multi-account. And they look different. Yeah. In the actual, you know, listing of tabs there. Right. Uh, so the tab grouping would be another way, a separate way to say, yeah, not only am I in this multi-account, I'm also grouping these particular tabs together because I'm doing this one job. Yeah. yeah and, and however you logically want to put that together, right? I mean, so maybe you got a a, a work, you know, group and a, a home group. And so then, you know, instead of closing and everything you could just have you know all of the things that you got going on at work and then when you're done with that you can 
you know, go over to your home thing. It, it provided you use the same computer. Um, I see. You know, so just however you want to logically group them together. And I think there isn't a great way to do that right now, right? Got it. Right. Okay. Okay. And then, so we're talking also vertical tabs. This is something that a lot of browsers have now. Yeah, this it, has been a very big request from people. I, you can do it with a um, with an extension, mm -hmm. right? You can go out to yep. the extension website, download one that'll do it for you. But now we're talking. This is actually baked in. Yeah, and, first class citizen. Yeah, and this is something Vivaldi's had for a very very long time. Uh, I think even Edge has had it for quite a while. Pretty close to after they announced it, honestly. I think they had the vertical tabs. Maybe even when they announced it initially. I'm not sure. It was it wasn't long anyway. So that's that's a, those are some welcome changes. I feel like. And then we've got a sidebar to yeah. be able to handle all of the plethora of tabs. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they they even link the uh, the article uh in PC Mag where uh Hazel the a Firefox user uh, had 7400 more than 7400 browser tabs open for for 2 years wow and then uh Firefox crashed but yet they were able to bring back all the tabs what wow yeah no that's uh that's intense yeah so i yeah, i would need some kind of management system how would you even keep that together how would you how I don't know. I don't. That's a lot of clicking. Well, because you're like, you know, when they get, you get too many of them, they get so tiny. And then all of a sudden you get that right. other drop down thingy and then you're, you're scrolling, right? Yeah, exactly. Forever. So you're already, you're already in a situation where it's like, you, you can't even, it's just icons at, at one point, right? Like once you get so many, it's just icons. So small, yeah, you can't see them. But then, so then right. you, you've got to go to the list. That's the only way you're going to know which right. thing you're, you're after. So when I've got like, you know, 87 different Gentoo tabs open, like it's, mm -hmm. I can't tell what the difference is. And then you're in, in a situation where there's just so, I don't know how you do that. No, even with a management system, I don't know how you manage that. But, but wow. But, you know, it's good to know that if you've got a bunch of them, you can keep it kind of organized and, and keep yourself, you know, productive. Kind of organized. You keep lying to yourself, Dan. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, uh there's no organization to that at this point. No. So the 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 next new thing is the the profile management system, which yes, that's kind of interesting, really, because it, you know Chrome's got this, Edge has got this. They all have yeah. different profile browser profiles, and you can switch between them, whatever, depending on which thing you're working on. Um, Firefox doesn't really have that right now. They just got the one that you can sign into. And yeah, you can log out and log into another one, but it's just not easy management to make that happen. Yeah. Um, Multi-account containers kind of split the difference on that, where you, you just had one big yep. browser and then you had different colored tabs to help you differentiate what's what. Yep. But this is a full on, here's a window right. to help you stay focused. Right. Here's a window to help you not stay focused. You right, know? right, right. So, so you can you can do that kind of thing. I agree. Yeah. So that's that's kind of cool too. So I like that. I like that a lot. And then you get intuitive privacy settings that deliver all the power of our world class anti tracking technologies in a simplified, easy to understand way. I didn't think it was unintelligible, uh, but I did normally just go in there and just hit the Black it all. strict yeah. one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't even don't even ask at yeah. all. Just make it strict by default and mm -hmm. that's the one I want. Yep. I yep. like that as well. And I then agree. they also mention uh more streamlined menus that reduce visual clutter and prioritize top user actions so you can get the important things quicker. Uh I don't know how many times I've touched that hamburger menu, but uh I guess for people that do, that's cool. Yeah, and I know a lot of people that have complained about some of the menu structures and, and whatnot. So it's it's nice that they're cleaning that up, right? Just get a little polish on that. Is it? It's nice that they're polishing. Like, yeah, I think so. Well, yes, it's nice that they're polishing, but... I don't know. There's a couple... It's just... I don't know. Could probably use a little cleanup. This is an audience question. So when you hit the hamburger menu, what is it that's clutter? Because maybe this is just me, you know, Windows 3.1... Gnome 2 KDE 3 kind of guy where, you know, all you get is an entire list of 78 options. And I'm just used to that maybe. 
But like, I, what? I, I think it's the ones that have like the two part menu thing that that people complain about. They'd like to either, you know, get it reduced down to the single menu item or put it into like a, a deeper settings thing, like the settings, rather than, you know, like if you go down to like the help, for example, it opens up a, another menu structure. Yeah. Instead of just being right there in front of your face. Okay. I, I don't know. Maybe, the, yeah. I think the more... But I think this is... The more used items get are, are maybe a little buried for some people, if if that makes sense, right? Okay, you, you have okay. To do the Bringing double, some of the options to the front, front sure. Right, your forefront, right? And so ha rather than having all that double step menu thing, maybe they could clean okay. those up a little bit. I could see that. I could see bringing more options to the front. Yeah. Um. But may maybe maybe this is just something I need to hear from. Like, what specifically? Well, it, it, would it, it, you here, consider clutter in the menu? Here's the other thing. Like, do you need um the add-ons? Like, for example, in in the hamburger menu, you've got add-ons and themes. Well, that's also in settings. Do you need that oh. in the forefront? I don't know that you do. Right? Because. Okay. I guess it's a thing, but it's the little puzzle piece thing, right? Yeah, okay. because it's up there too. It's not just um you know, it's in the hamburger menu, it's up there in the in the icons, it's also in the settings. So that's three different ways to get to the same thing. They probably only need one or two. Okay. Good point. I, I'll take that. That that's for sure. Like there should just be one way to do the thing. Mm -hmm. Because in that in that like the crux of Linux too, it's like where uh you know there's yeah. no one way to do the thing, and so you can't actually tell anybody how to do the thing because you don't know exactly how their system is set up, and so you're just like, well, now you gotta open the terminal, mm -hmm. and that's that's like the Achilles heel. That's why nobody uses. And that's not why nobody uses Linux, but that's why nobody uses Linux. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So all right. Streamlining that probably probably okay. I got that. I got that. And then there's a bunch of uh, performance and st uh, performance stuff, faster, smoother browsing on Firefox, thanks to quicker page loads and startup times, and all while saving more of your phone's battery life. I suppose that's probably going to come to Android first. It's on we're only in the talking prototyping stage mm -hmm. of uh, because it's available now, where you can use your own engine right. on iOS. Right, right. So that is a thing. I know Microsoft, is, or Microsoft, not them, Mozilla is looking into bringing the engine over. But right. again, like do uh, how many iOS users actually care what the engine is doing in the background, right? No, but if it performs better, they might like it. Now that is a huge thing. But if it performs worse... Well, they won't like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's going to lose you users. So you better make sure it works, I guess, when you flip the switch. Yeah. Yeah. The tiny sliver of people that don't use Safari. Right. right. Tyranny right. of the default, man. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's a choice, okay. Keep keep who you can. So. Yeah, I think those are good things. Like, I mean, focusing on the browser. Whoa. Yeah. And the, <laughs> the last thing they mentioned in the article is uh, that... They're looking into AI. All right. I, I know. But, mm, yep. Lots of people not on the AI train. Although Leo and I have pitched it only if it happens in certain ways. And Exactly. Like, I don't need Google telling me to add Elmer's glue to my pizza to keep the cheese on the pizza, right? To keep, right. It from slide, keep the cheese sliding from sliding off the pizza. Like, I get it. Yes. It's probably non-toxic, but I don't think that makes it tasty. Yeah, well, yeah, just because it says it's non-toxic doesn't mean it's good for you. So, you know, <laughs> exactly. keep, keep it away from my pizza. No. Exactly. No, no, no. Just, just the Parmesan and the Romano, please. Yeah, use That's, the cheese no. for the glue, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? But one of the cool things, and this is actually one of the very specific things I said that AI can do for us right now is AI-generated alt text for images, but not just any old image because I think I think the web is getting better at yeah the web is taking care of that for you you're getting served that stuff with the alt text anyway right right but specifically in the PDFs that Firefox is rendering for you in browser you're getting AI generated alt text for images and 
I think in a lot of cases, it's better to have some alt text than to have no alt text. Just to know that there's an image there, but not know what it is. Yeah, it's a PDF. So, you know, there's probably some text around the image already. And so you Uh could do a little OCR stuff, snip out some of the highlights potentially. And and if AI is tuned well enough, it can apply some of those probably things to the image, right? Is provided it can figure it out. And, you know, Mozilla and Firefox, they keep, they keep, tweaking the pdf component of the browser and they're probably they might be one of the best better yeah better than some of the other pdf readers that are out there they've done a lot of work with the text uh input like for forms and so you can fill out your forms you know pdf forms i don't think you need adobe reader anymore like on windows and mac machines i I guess that's where i'm going you don't need the proprietary adobe stuff to to actually Mm. function for the most part and Beautiful. So Mozilla is helping you with that. Yeah. So I'll leave you with a question because I, I've always thought that Firefox and Mozilla in general have been doing a good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, that have been they've been a good steward, not always right, but generally a good steward of uh, all of the donations they get. What is Firefox missing at this point? Because I still see that there's tons of Chrome users in mm-hmm. the Linux community. There's still tons of Chromium users. There's still a ton of even Edge, weirdly enough, um, Brave and Vivaldi. Right. What is Firefox missing for you? Is it feasible to say, if Firefox added this one thing, I would come back? Is there is there that thing? Because I feel like they're doing a pretty good job adding stuff, and they have been over the years. Yeah, they have. I I really like this focus that they're they're applying here, rather than some of those third party thingies that they've ventured off into and then come back and said that yeah, wasn't a good idea. I'm excited for these changes. Uh, it's my number two already, and maybe it'll make it my number one when they implement some of these things. I don't know. Ooh, it's got a possibility. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Vertical tabs just sound fun. They, so, they're cool. I, I love my vertical screen real estate. I don't have a cool vertical monitor mm. um, to, you know, not care. Uh, so, you know, that would that would be a nice little thing because I already go into the about config and like squish right. it down a little bit. Yep. You can do the density and squish it down. Uh, and if you didn't know that, you can go into about config and type in density and then UI density and then add a one. And I know it's like 14 pixels, but I want those. Yeah. So give me. It takes that me. padding give out, me, give me. you know, that you got space so you can get rid of the space and just put the part of the content right in your face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I like the option. That's really cool. So, um, but yeah, let me know. What is it? What is it that's keeping you away from Firefox? Why, why, is, it, why is it not good enough for you? Yeah. Uh, we want to know. So if you like looking at our face... I'm looking at Dan's face. He's he's looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> you can find it on YouTube. Uh, you know, that's uh, youtube.com slash Linux user space. Or you can find it at linuxuserspace.show slash YouTube. That's another way to get there. And, you know, you can catch all the video content over there. If you just want the history bits. Coming up. You can catch those over at Tilvids. Um, Tilvids is the place that, you know, edutainment. That's what they, they build that as. So. That's right. That's why we try to give you the history bits over there. And uh, that's they're a great host to our content. And we're really appreciative. So, you know, give them some support. And if you want to give us some support directly, you can do that over at Patreon. That's linuxuserspace.show slash Patreon. And, uh, you know, you give us a buck and keep us going and we'll do these things going forward. And That's right. You got to fund that barbecue. Yeah, the barbecue. I think that might happen. Gonna, there's gonna be a barbecue. That we gotta have like a barbecue, like smoked meats somewhere, and we got we gotta figure out how to do that. Yeah. Uh, so fund it over at Patreon. <laughs> yeah, well, buy me meat 